Hello fellow intelligent investors, my name is René Zalman and in this video I would like to continue to discuss the topic of portfolio management. In last week's video I have shown that diversification may preserve wealth but that concentration or running a concentrated portfolio can build wealth. I have shown that it's difficult to look like an index and yet still outperform it. But what is a concentrated portfolio? Some superstar investors like Charlie Munger believe that owning just three stocks may be fully sufficient if the stocks you own are incredibly strong franchises. Other gurus prefer to invest in 20 different companies. So as always when it comes to personal finance and investment topics, there is no one size fits all approach. So what I would like to do in this video is to outline a set of questions that you need to consider when it comes to choosing the appropriate size of your portfolio. Your wealth building journey is very personal and so I hope this video helps you figure out the optimal portfolio size that suits your personality, your financial goals, your skill level and temperament and also your investment style of course. And without further ado, let's get started. Have you ever wondered how you can make your hard-earned money work for you? Have you ever dreamed of building generational wealth and leaving a legacy? My name is René Zellman and I'll teach you how you can manage and invest your money with confidence, a long-term vision and without losing your mind. Join me on my journey of intelligent investing and learn how smart people can compound their money effectively and accumulate wealth. Okay. Before we jump into the topic of this video, I just wanted to let you know that this channel is fairly new. I think it's only the 11th video or so. So if you like what I'm doing here and want to support me on my journey, I'd really appreciate if you simply click the like button or even subscribe to the channel. All right. In the last video, I discussed why investors who desire to outperform the market need to run a highly concentrated portfolio as opposed to maybe an over diversified portfolio. And I referenced various studies that illustrated just how quickly most of the benefits of diversification can be achieved. For example, one of the studies showed that about 90% of the maximum benefits of diversification, which is mainly reduced volatility, was derived from portfolios of 12 to 18 stocks. If you haven't watched this video yet, I highly recommend watching this video first. It's quite long, but I think it's well worth the time commitment. I'll add a link to that video to the description box below. But to emphasize the key takeaway of the previous video, let me just briefly show you the results of a study conducted by JBB that comes to a pretty similar conclusion. The following graph shows the effect of increasing diversification on both possible expected return and portfolio volatility. What you should notice here is that the reduction of volatility is steep at first, but then levels off. On the other hand, average expected returns decline more slowly. And when you think about it, this makes sense. An investor with a 100 stock portfolio wouldn't have 100 equally promising stocks. If the investor would create a portfolio consisting of just one stock, he or she would only pick the most promising company, of course, and would be very careful about opportunity costs. But since a one stock portfolio would be very volatile and the business risk of just one company too high, the investor might add a second, a third or a fourth stock to that portfolio to reduce both volatility but also overall business risk. But he also expects from these second, third and fourth stocks to maybe lower the expected returns. Now if we get back to that JVB graph, you might have noticed the absence of numbers on the x-axis. That's because the rate at which your expected portfolio return decreases depends on the expected return of each additional stock and thus of course your purchase price. At some point the benefit of additional diversification is outweighed by the cost of additional diversification. And the major cost of broad diversification is the potential of lower expected returns. The team of JVB concludes, there will be a point that tips the scale for each investor. When adding more stocks increases his risk of disappointing return, more than it significantly reduces portfolio volatility. That's why there is no definitive answer to the question of how many stocks one should own, 
but is also influenced by the opportunities you have and the opportunities uh, Mr. Market provides you. So what you need to realize is that most of your returns as an investor will come from just a few of your investments. Robert Huckstrom wrote in his book, The Warren Buffett Portfolio, choose a few stocks that are likely to produce above average returns over the long haul. Concentrate the bulk of your investments in those stocks and have the fortitude to hold steady during any short-term market durations. Munish Papraya recommends 8 to 10 different bets. Other investors have 10 to 15 stocks in their portfolio. And Buffett once said, if I were running 50, 100 or 200 million dollars, I would have 80% in 5 positions with 25% for the largest. And here's another quote from Buffett. We might invest up to 40% of our net worth in a single security under conditions coupling an extremely high probability that our facts and reasoning are correct with a very low probability that anything could drastically change underlying value of the investment. We are obviously only going to go to 40% in very rare situations. This rarity, of course, is what makes it necessary that we concentrate so heavily when we see such an opportunity. So basically, if you ask 10 different investors, you will get 10 different answers. If I had to classify most of the famous guru investors, I would put them in three buckets. First, there are the ultra concentrated investors with less than 10 stocks and large positions representing 20 to 40% of the portfolio. For instance, you can look at the portfolios of Francis Chu or Li Lu. Then you have those with around 10 stocks, a standard position of 10% and maybe one to two larger positions and then a handful of smaller positions, of course. Pat Dorsey or Chuck Acker come to mind. You can also look at the portfolio of Terry Smith. And lastly, still others believe in a 20 stock model, standard position sizes of 5%, their best two to three ideas are maybe modestly larger and then there are some smaller holdings. I think the portfolio of Nick Drain and Michael Lindsell would be an appropriate example here. So, which model should you copy? Before I get to this, let me please know in the comments down below how many stocks you like to have in your portfolio. Do you follow the model of a particular famous investor? And what do you think are the advantages and disadvantages of your approach? All right, so which model should you copy? As I've said before, I think it depends on a lot of factors. And I think there's not the right way to do it. So here's what I would recommend. I would argue that you should consider the following set of five questions when it comes to choosing the appropriate size of your portfolio. The first question you should consider is, how much money are you managing or investing? If you are just starting out with $5,000, I think you should run a very concentrated portfolio. You might even want to invest in a single stock if it provides by far the best upside potential. If you are just starting out to invest relatively small sums of money, a permanent loss of capital won't be as catastrophic as it would be when you are already man managing hundreds of thousands of dollars. And when you are just starting out, you have this continuous stream of new cash and so it makes sense to concentrate on your very best ideas. Maybe your best one to three ideas. A second question to consider is, what is your investment horizon? If you are approaching retirement, I would rather have a larger number of holdings because you don't have an infinite time to wait for unrealized losses to recover. As you know, I don't think volatility is risk. But of course, if you have a short time horizon and are forced to sell some of your holdings relatively soon, then volatility all of a sudden starts to matter. If you are required to sell some of your holdings or at least regularly trim your positions because you need to fund your lifestyle and retirement, then volatility needs to be considered. By contrast, if you have an investment horizon of 30 years or even more, then wild short-term fluctuations should bother you much less, of course, and being highly concentrated in just a few securities shouldn't bother you really. A third question to ask yourself is, what are your financial goals and which rate of return do you need to achieve or to reach these goals? Have you maybe already achieved your financial goals? As you have learned, generating alpha becomes harder the more stocks you have in your portfolio. 
The smaller the number of positions, the greater the impact of your ideas on your portfolio. But of course, the greater the volatility and the greater the risk of permanent capital impairment if your ideas don't work out as anticipated. And maybe you have simply made a mistake. I think you have to be humble enough to acknowledge that you will be wrong from time to time. As Li Lu puts it, the most important thing in our business is intellectual honesty. What I mean is four different things. Know what you know, know what you don't know, know what you don't have to know, and realize that there's always a possibility that you don't know that you don't know. So overall, if you have very ambitious financial goals, you might have to go for a high level of concentration to get there. But the rate of return that you need to achieve to reach your goals also depends on your level of income and of course your savings ratio. So please factor this in as well. All right, question number four. Question number four is how well can you deal with uh, wild price fluctuations? Because having 80% in your top five positions is quite a remarkable focus. And I believe most investors cannot withstand the wild swings that come with this setup. If you run such a highly concentrated portfolio, your net worth might drop 20, 30 or even 50% in a relatively short period of time. And this might happen quite frequently. And you need to be okay with that and realize that the drop in value might not necessarily reflect a change in the businesses you own. So if you run an ultra concentrated portfolio, you might wake up the next day and realize that your net worth is down 20% because of some random news. Can you deal with that? In my view, most people actually overestimate their ability to act rationally once their net worth is halved, even though, it's, even though this is only an unrealized loss. There's this great saying, everyone is a long-term investor until they start seeing red. And the fifth and last question to consider when evaluating what portfolio size suits your post personality, that question is, what's your investing philosophy? As you know, there are various value investing philosophies, ranging from deep value investing to compounding investing. And if you are only investing in exceptional, high quality businesses with durable competitive advantages, you can of course justify holding fewer stocks. If on the other hand, you are primarily investing in troubled and distressed businesses, so a special situation type of investments, investments that are available ext at extremely cheap prices, then it's much harder to justify such a running such a concentrated portfolio because you will often hold these stocks for a shorter period of time. And of course, the business risk of these in trouble companies is obviously much greater too. And so is the chance of you being wrong. Also, companies that can be considered special situation type investments often carry a lot of debt. On the other hand, for great businesses to deteriorate, it takes time. And as a result, investors would have sufficient time to re-examine their investment thesis and maybe change their minds. So the key takeaway here is that the quality of the stocks you invest in will also determine how many stocks you must hold to be well diversified. The higher the quality of the businesses, the less diversified you need to be. And of course, your own conviction regarding a firm's quality matters too. All right, so those are the five questions that you should consider to find your optimal portfolio size. As I said, there is no strict right or wrong answer here. At the end of the day, you have to be able to sleep well at night knowing that your portfolio is prepared for anything that may come. And if you need 20 stocks to be confident to make rational decisions, if some kind of problem emerges, and don't let anyone else convince you that you should have a more concentrated portfolio. The impact of behavioral risk and consequently making irrational decisions is not ir irrelevant. And I think it's probably by far the biggest risk many investors have to deal with. Yet most investors do not acknowledge the risk or this type of risk and actually overestimate their ability to act rationally when some kind of crisis emerges. It may be a company specific problem, an industry specific issue, or maybe the market as a whole might be affected just like we have experienced in this year. Now, personally, I believe that a portfolio of 6 to 20 stocks will provide the biggest benefits. I think such a portfolio has enough concentration to allow a skilled investor to really stand apart from the market. 
but it is not so concentrated that a black swan event, bad luck or a mistake, because ultimately every investor will make mistakes. While it is not so con concentrated that such an event can kill an otherwise competent investor. Also, I believe that constraining the number of investments in your portfolio forces you to really focus on your best ideas. It forces you to think really hard about opportunity cost and it forces you to make decisions between investments. Buffett often illustrates the power of this focus by highlighting that an investor would achieve superior returns over the long run if he or she would use an imaginary 20 slot card. And every time he or she would make an investment uh, during their or his or her lifetime, he or she would have to punch the card. And as I said, it would force the investor to really think about opportunity cost. To wrap it up here, let's pretend someone from your local town owned six different businesses. You would probably say that this person is a well diversified business person. Yet when it comes to investing in the stock market, experts suggest holding up to 100 different holdings to be fully diversified. But what we have outlined so far should have convinced you that these alleged experts got it wrong. You could just as well invest in an index with almost no time commitment. If you do decide to be more active, to truly analyze business fundamentals, secular trends, the total addressable market and so on and so forth, then every position you have should have the potential to have an impact on the performance of your overall portfolio. You want to win big when you are right, of course. And if you don't have a high conviction regarding a stock, a conviction so high that you are comfortable with putting 5-10% to of your net worth in that stock, then you probably should invest in that stock in the first place. At the same time, I believe that over-concentration can be a deadly sin too. In my opinion, no single position should maintain such a large percentage that it can determine your future. It would be insane, for instance, if your retirement depends on the performance of a single stock. Also, you should consider if and how your positions are correlated. For example, having multiple 15-20% to 20 positions which are correlated, for instance, because the businesses operate in the same industry, I think that can also be considered like an absurdly high degree of concentration. And that's it for today. As always, if you like what I'm doing here, please share the videos with others. Subscribe to the channel and maybe hit the bell button to be notified whenever I upload new videos. May your finances and investments prosper. Good luck.